there you go. Right, you can see this side doesn't work out too well. It's pretty awful. So I've got acetone on a cotton bud. I'm just going to take that right back. Just this wee area. And that bit down there. There you go, that's taken. That's uh, the mixture of the two stains. The black and the red. So what I'm going to do is and get the super glue off, I'll reapply the colour just red because that side is pretty much just red and you see it blends a lot better actually I wonder if you can see what I can see without the light no but basically where the stain is, you, is there's a separation but it's a lot less noticeable than how bad it is on this side Yeah, oh, I need, I need more room. Once I'm through the super glue, I should be able just to take the stain off with water if it doesn't get all lifted off by cotton bud. I think that's me pretty much through, yeah. Um, I'm gonna put a. Uh, I'm just dipping it into my big five litre bottle. But if I can put a wee bit in a wee container, I don't have to contaminate the whole bottle just to get a wee bit. This is why I don't consider myself an actual luthier. It's because luthiers, you know, they're sitting building instruments and don't have to really worry about shit like this until they do get it repaired in. But people that are dedicated luthiers, you know, they're, they're building instruments all day long and just spray on a nice finish, polish and buff it and have a Beautiful instrument at the end of it, whereas this is kind of just tedious. <laughs> it's fun though, like for me, all this started. Uh, I want to say around two thousand and ten. Putting pick putting your pickups in an Epiphone. We've still got that headphone with those pickups in it. Well, it doesn't matter where you start. This this stuff is just is worthwhile doing. Is, is it the most practical skill in the world? Probably not. Is it fun? Yes. And if you're loving life, not having fun, what are you even doing? So that's, that's one thing about the lockdown, is since the start everyone's just wanting to escape their, their homes and I'm being like, 
I don't have to go anywhere, no one's putting pressure on me. I can sit in here and work away quietly at my own pace, which is what I love doing. And you see my living room in other videos, just go through a couple of marshals to keep me happy. Really am very simple as a person. That's not quite bare wood, but that's kind of where I want it. Just a couple of passes with 400 grip. Just so I can kind of get a better idea of where I'm at. Oh, mind I said in the last segment where I'd be comfortable working on this that's all dry and it's not even 6 o'clock yet so that's again that's why I like using super glue as a a clear coat touch up because you can polish it and all that stuff yeah, this is just red Then I want to dab the excess. This was not too wet. Can I wipe that into the green a little bit? Yeah, there we go. So that's kind of. See how that's a lot lighter? That's kind of what that side started out like. So that's where I want it. Did I get enough off that wee bit? Right, I'm gonna go back in with the acetone. Not quite happy with just this wee bit here. Something's starting to gel on me. I think I think it was just a super glue, but I'd rather it didn't. The good thing about this being acetone as well, it evaporates within seconds. When it goes on that thin, obviously the stuff in the jar is lasting a little bit longer. Now that will evaporate within half an hour or so, if I leave the lid off, which it probably will. In an ideal world, I'd, uh, I'd buy red tinted super glue. But, one, I don't want to look up the price of that. Because I'll be Stu Mac that sells it. And two... This is that's more interesting. Maybe maybe not to watch, but to do. It gives you an idea of how colours interact with each other. Um, what affects what in which way, you know. So you want over. There we go. Is there enough red on you? Yeah, plenty on there. And give us another quick pass over. Actually, I'll I'll soak the place. A clean bit of this. 
wipe it into the green. Because if I wipe it that way, you know, it's, I want all the pores are going that direction. So I don't want to wipe away. I want to wipe into it. You know. Then I'll leave. I'll leave that a little more precisely and then leave that to dry. Yeah, that's that's a valuable lesson. You saw I've had the black in that and it's a good match for everything around it. As soon as I put the clear on it, got way too dark and completely messed it up. So now that's way too light. Well it's not too light, that's kinda of, kinda of in between too light and too dark. So that'll probably hide pretty well. Like you wouldn't know that was down to the bare wood by the time I finished. Which, which is the idea. Obviously you still, still see the crack and know this is a headstock repair. But the trick is making it look good. I could have just glued this together and left it. And that would have been fine but... You know, you do things like that. It's fine if someone... If it's someone's main player that they're going to like then gig with. But this... The intent for this guitar is to be sold on. Um, So... It is fully my reputation on the line if I don't make this look good because that's a functional repair like you know I could probably dunk this against the door frame without it breaking I'm not going to I'm not going to test it that way but it's you know type ones I've got is a little old but even at that I still have faith in the how good the marriage is between these two pieces I can't tell if it's dust or what in these parts, so I'm just gonna quick once over. And again, leave that to dry. I probably won't leave it too long. And then I'll just, sorry, pardon me. And then I'll just get more glue on that for the clear coat. But yeah, mistakes like that are good to learn from. So it's, it might be more time, but it's yeah, time well spent correcting and uh, seeing, seeing how things go. I've got a tripod in a very precarious, precarious position. So you can see this. Hoping that's showing up okay. Yeah. So I've got the guitar held by two bench dogs basically. And uh, all I'm doing is lightly scraping. What I don't want to do is scrape through a lot of the stuff here because up here is really thin. And I could easily just destroy the the stain stained parts. I want to try and get this kind of level without taking too much off. This is, this is where I want to be really careful. I want to take some off and not a crazy amount.
better still, but I don't know, it's kind of like a bump here that I want to get rid of. Well, even if it stays there, as long as I can feather it in, that's that's the important bit. I know this video's gone on a while, but. It's just kind of things that Sid not really showed or these kind of techniques because they are inefficient but if you've got nothing else, why not? Because in, in an ideal world to take like a tub of this finish, like uh, if that was nitro, you just had to colour the wood then spray over it with uh, something. And I'd, I'd be done a lot quicker and be a lot smoother, but I don't have, well, basically an airbrush and the type of things and things that can do a bit more effectively. This is more Gorilla guitar repairs. Well, finished touch-ups. You know I've got the equipment to just glue bits of wood together. <laughs> And you can see the, the glossy parts go to kind of a matte, matte finish and that's what I'm wanting so I can build up more, more glue. Because it says just like any finish you need to build it up slow, as slowly as you can. Of course it helps you get the colour right first time, you don't have to strip it all back and start again, essentially. Like I did yesterday. I want to keep going this way. Fantastic noise it makes as well, just goes right through your light nails on chalkboard. There we go. Sorry that was rattling making a bit of noise, it was annoying me.
that is almost there. Um, so I'm just going to see what the camera actually picked up. Yeah. That's good. So you would have seen it going from all glossy to the scraped surface. So I'm going to scrape just a little bit more and then more coats of this. Uh, not got much else to say right now on that. So I'm going to keep working. Okay. <coughs> Here I am with the Orville. of sanded it kind of flat. What I've ended up doing is because I've still got the everything's kind of built up kind of nicely. Um, I didn't want to just go on head and polish it like that. So I took something simple, red marker. Coloured that bit where I thought it was a bit light there, where I thought it was a bit light. And round on the other side. And I hadn't planned on spraying it. But I've got a full can of this stuff, so I figured I might as well give it a try, see if it'll work. Okay. And I'm literally on the spray, spraying the dull parts. So. I just want to get a one final wipe down with a pack cloth. That's it, really not a lot. So yeah, it's got to be 10 15 minutes. I'm going to leave that for half an hour <coughs> and uh, see where it ends up and probably put another coat on tonight. And maybe another coat on tomorrow. But See, even with that, that's not too bad. That's kind of best I can hope for without stripping this all back and completely respraying it like I did the Gibson. So, quite happy with that, and leave it there. Excuse the messy workbench as usual. Oh, just up. Or recently awake, so I'm a bit thingy. Um, after I sprayed four coats don't know if you can see that actually I might turn this light off you can see that a bit better I put permanent marker on it again which is what the idea was um, putting it on the super glue uh, clear coat as I wanted uh, the wood completely sealed and then a little bit of colour on top and I've managed to get that so but I need to clear coat over that so I'm basically undoing 5 seconds of colouring just going to scuff this with 1200 yes yeah, 1200 uh, I don't wanna add a foam block there it is I'm just wrapping it because, like I say, just just a quick scuff sand. So 
trying to plug a paper. Um, I really shouldn't be wet sanding it, but a little bit of lubrication doesn't hurt. Just soapy water. As I say, I'm only scuffing. I'm not trying to do any major sanding operation here. Well, there's some red coming off. That's the um, that's the pen. Exactly what I wanted to see right now. And I'm only going to do another four coats. I'm not going to build this up like crazy. It's a really good light, so I'm just uh, checking. I don't know what you'll actually be able to see, but I can see that it's nicely dulled all around here. Oh, a bit more dulled here than on the other side. So I'll do another scuff. Let's get that wee bit. I want to be a little more sanded up here. I've got the flat side. I don't drop it. I'm just wrapping it. I'm not need to be fancy or anything or perfect. Hoping you can see the difference this makes. Um, turn that a little bit. I know zoom's horrible, but I'm trying to show this. So there's on camera there's less of a discrepancy, but in person you can see that quite clearly. I'm just going to put a little bit of colour onto this. There's a spot. Can you see that? Can the centre frame this bit? Where does it end? And I'm going to put a bit of colour into this area too. And then the, the difficult part, the part that's been fighting me <laughs> the whole time. Can I get a better angle on that? Yeah. Probably thinking it looks a bit too dark. Well, once it's dry, I'm just going to very lightly go over it with steel wool. The pen, specifically, not going to touch any of the other area, any of the other areas. So that will help kind of blend it, not have it stick up too much. 
and then when it's all clear coated over it's all going to go a little bit dark anyway um because if you look there that's what's going to go to compared to how light is here because of the way um the scuff surface is refracting the light actually it's refracting in a sentence that's a bit unusual for me Just want to kind of blend it. And get that tiny wee corner. Yeah, just bring that out there and around here. I'm not sure yet, and I'll give, give that a few minutes to dry. Um, yeah, so I'm actually going to scuff the pen with some steel wool. Then spray four more coats, so there's not much else to see here. I'm just going to stop it there. Uh, I need to apologise because I kind of got cracking on with this a wee bit. Um, so since you last saw it after spraying, Cut it back with 1200 grit, went up the Minzerna polishes, and now I'm onto the last polishing stage. Um, I don't know if you can, what the camera can actually pick up. Uh, actually, I'll bring it in closer. Oh, that's how we're looking there. You can see that wee bit there. And that colour difference there. So oh, you can still see the repair, obviously. Nothing can really hide that without completely refinishing and all that shit, but that's not what we're doing. Um the cam this isn't going to make a huge difference on the camera at least. But in terms of feel it's gonna make this a bit more uniform. Come on. There we go. And this is the, the finer polish. Um, I'm not going to go with water because this really isn't going to do too much. Um, I don't really need to keep it any more cooler. Forgot how to set this up, that's what that's I've done wrong. <laughs> See, that was almost a disaster. Just like my life. <laughs> right. So, on you out the road. Bring you around here. That's fine. Go on. Pull. See, I'm not having a good time. Ah, <laughs> oh, right, okay. Yeah, my bad. Totally fucked this up. Okay. Can you be clamped there? No. Nope. Right, back in. Right. Take two.
think. Yeah, a couple of <laughs> fibers from this have melted onto the fish. Maybe I do want a little bit more. Need a small pad though first. No, it's not hot, that's good. The melted fibers again, they're refusing to come off. I'll get them off. Uh, right. Probably thinking about mad going for a blade. It's just. Actually, can do this by hand. I mean, says love as, as much as I love doing this stuff, sometimes it's a bit of a pain. Polishing specifically, I mean, um, there's one thing getting a nice finish built up, but it's another when you start wrecking it with a, a little bit of heat, a little bit too much heat than, than you were expecting. I think that's just 
good as it's going to get. So I'll stop in there before I break it and try and do it again. <laughs> this polishing cloth. It's actually going to clean the stuff off. Now the residue from the actual polishing compound, I'm not sure it's going to do much to any kind of artifacts left behind from the heat. As I say, this is something that the camera probably hasn't picked up at all. But where it does make a difference, so down here, yeah, factory finish. You can feel an ever so slight transition, but it's, it's up here past the nut, so I should. Bend in there, it's fine. Just make room and get in close. No, oh, sorry. Actually, can I... No, switch this off. So that's closer to what it looks like to the naked eye. And that's not bad. So... That's pretty much this. Um, I do have a little chip that I'm not going to... I'm not going to bother filming uh, so I'm not just glue it, sand it down, polish it up. It's really straightforward. Um, what I'm going to do separately is make the inlay so next part of this video should be the guitar playing. So that's that's where we're at. Yeah, stopping there. Okay, I'm kind of by the bell. The camera will be a bit precariously balanced. This is the Orville pretty much finished up. Um, you can see I've replaced the inlays, that's in a separate video. Uh, it's not on camera. Yes, yeah, sorry, I'm just trying to make sure. Got one, two, three replaced, and give me a few better angles in the other video. Um, so, yeah, the heat press on the neck. Um, actually, yours. I'm trying to look at the camera and hold the guitar at the same time. So if I check for a leaf at the ninth fret, there's a tiny amount. You could actually do it with just like very much a bar here, just more of relief. But I already had to loosen the crush for quite a lot, so that's how well the, the heat press has worked at. With tens on it in standard, um you still have plenty of adjustability to get a back bow if you need it. Or anything like if you want to put say 11s in standard uh, neck could definitely take it at this point i don't know how long that would last for but it could definitely do it currently and uh yeah close up of the actual headstock repair it's a bit hard to see i'll put the light off yeah you can see that better that's all glossed up and everything and feeling feeling pretty normal. Um I'm a wee bit pissed off today, I went out a walk. Like I tried to do two walks a day but I thought I'll be productive. Pick up some light bulbs for um a wee this wee lamp that packed in. I know this has nothing to do with the guitar. But look at that. Being it fitting.
What do I need? Bloody screw fitting, so I'm right pissed off with myself. So that'll be this evening's walk um, activity. But as for this, you've got 57 classics in it, and this is just the Wee Katana. Cleans out quite nice as well. I do have quite a lot of gear on. Yeah. Oh, we're a wee bit out of tune, but that's fine. a lot of kiss so that's how I keep playing lick it up. Um so yeah, usual setup so I've got two millimeter on the bass side, one half millimeter on the treble side and holding the last right one half millimeter on your pickup height. Again these are 57 classics so they they sit a nice less pole like this really well. I did leave that spacer nut in the behind the crossroad not just just in case, um, you know, because it, it does it does give you a bit more thread to go into if you need it. But not not that it does need it now, but it might might need it in the future. So it's better just to kind of leave it there, I think, for just now. Because the guitar plays fucking great, like you know, it's actually really good. I did shape, do some shaping to not get the slots the right height. Anyway, I'm rambling now because uh, I do. Um, it's one of those repairs that you kind of bond with because you've had the guitar for that long. You know, I don't, I don't really kind of. I don't want. I don't want this one to go. I quite like it. <laughs> it's not a huge neck, and it's not like a slim, a proper slim. Like I want to say sexy neck, but even sexy necks are about this size. Um. Yeah, it's good. It's good. I'm mean, look at the color of it. I mean, that just screams. Slashes uh, 87 done that like when after you got it refinished after you burned it broke the neck and all that stuff it's it's this color and you know me a huge slash fan so this hard to see it go but <laughs> it has to and I don't have I don't need another two humbucker Les Paul I need something a bit different if I'm going to bring another Les Paul into the house permanently so yeah. That's my sad story for today. Well, two sad stories. Bum light bulbs and a guitar I don't want to, I'd actually want to keep. <laughs> right, that's it.